Hello, this is Donna Marie Johnson. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am about to share some things with you that are difficult for me to share um, because it is a place of vulnerability. And hey, what better way to grow myself than to um, share something that could help somebody else to be free and to grow. All right, so here we go. Um, right now on the Lead Like a Queen blog, I'm going to be starting a series about loneliness and how that impacts your leadership. Now, for women who are caregivers, um, especially if you've been a caregiver for years or for decades like me, then you will understand um, how this is such an important issue for people, not just women, women and men, who are spousal caregivers specifically, caring for a spouse. So. Again, this is difficult for me, so bear with me. I'm going to be sharing some things that are um, from my heart, but also some crucial information that you need to understand that is researched information. It's not something that just comes from my own experience, okay? So first of all, let me share with you that researchers have shown that loneliness is one of the huge issues for women and for men who find themselves as the solo leaders of their families, um, of their businesses and of their organizations by default. Um, they find themselves as the solo, solo leaders by default due to their spouse's trauma or tragedy. This could be um, widows, widowers. This could be um, people who are divorced or separated. This could be um, somebody who is a spousal caregiver like me, who has a spouse who's alive, but who has some challenges that are keeping them from um, operating at the level they used to as a spouse, as a partner in the relationship. So <clears throat> this is something that you don't hear a lot of people talking about because this is hard. This is the tough stuff of life that people don't like to think about. This is the ugly. This is the worst. These are the things that people don't like to think about, don't like to talk about. But for your sake, I'm talking about it because I know it's important. All right. So within a few of the support groups that I frequent online and in person, it's also the most bemoaned topic, this topic of loneliness uh, for those who people who are spousal caregivers who are um, still living with their spouse, but their spouse is just not able to be present with them like they used to be. This topic of loneliness is extremely um, uh, important for these folks that are coming to the support groups to talk about with each other. And so um, for those of you who don't participate in those types of groups, you won't see this. So I'm just telling you now, that's, that's a big part of that. Sometimes people are um, having temptations caused by their vulnerability alongside that loneliness. And People don't want to talk about it, but it's true. You'll see it in movies and things like that too, but this is real for a lot of people. They have some vulnerability, some emotional rawness, and confusion that's mixed into the situation of being a spousal caregiver, a widow, or a divorcee. Um, loneliness is an important issue to deal with for your own sake. It's not just me talking about it from some type of academic standpoint. I'm not a therapist. However, I am a coach. I'm a leadership coach. And loneliness can destroy your ability to lead effectively if you don't learn how to deal with it effectively. So <clears throat> when you, your emotions and your choices are off the rails, you know, you're just an emotional mess, you cannot lead yourself well. If you can't lead yourself well, there's no way you can lead anybody else well either. And um, that includes, it's gonna affect how you're handling business matters, how you're handling financial matters, how you're hand handling parenting matters, all of these things, how you're handling your relationship with your spouse who isn't well. All of that's gonna be impacted by this loneliness and by the cycles that it causes, the emotional cycles it causes in you when it's not being dealt with. So just know, first and foremost, the first thing you have to do if you want to change that and be in a position to be able to lead like a queen, the first thing you have to do is admit that there is some loneliness going on. 
that was hard for me. I won't lie. That was very hard for me to openly admit that in public around other people. And I'm going to talk to you about why it's so hard, not just for me, but for a lot of people to talk about this issue of loneliness. Um, now, <clears throat> I'm going to backtrack a little bit. 12 years ago, I did not know that my husband's brain was being changed by a disease that was shrinking his brain and affecting not just his um, mobility, he was falling and things like that a lot. I didn't know that it was also affecting the way that he would communicate with me, the way that he would express his emotions or his care for me. I didn't know, okay? So 12 years um, and until this year, I did not know what dementia is, okay? This year, I just found out this year, I did not know. So I spent 12 years thinking that my husband just did not care about me. That is very painful, very painful and very lonely. Went through that for a long time. Now, now that I know, what can I do? We're going to get into that. So in terms of marriage counseling, this is something that's kind of a hot button issue for me. I started feeling like marriage counseling was a bunch of BS because it was not working. Everything that we would learn, it just seemed like he would take two steps forward and 20 steps back. He was not retaining the information that we learned. We went through a lot of marriage counseling, a lot of marriage classes, marriage books, marriage phone calls, all kinds of things. It was not working and it made me feel so bad. Not just lonely, but very angry, 12 years. That's a long time to go through this. And I know there are other people out there that are going through the same thing. This affects your ability to lead when you're always angry and upset and you don't know what's really going on, what's the root cause of what's going on in your marriage. And then you feel like you're a single parent because that person can't be present to parent the way that they used to. These are things that affect you as a leader and they do make you feel lonely. And if you don't get control over your um, emotions and under learn to understand what's going on, there's no way that you can lead effectively. So let's move on. In addition to having the issue of not knowing what dementia is and what brain health problems were affecting my marriage, I also felt guilty and ashamed because I didn't know that there was no help. Marriage counseling doesn't help when a person has dementia. And nobody tells you that. Nobody tells you that. You have to figure that stuff out on your own. With the help of the Holy Spirit, thank God, if I was not a woman of God, if I did not know Jesus, I have no idea where I would be, where my marriage would be, where my kids would be, you know, right now. Because this has been one of the most trying, lonely, um, angry times of my life, I did not understand what was going on with my husband's brain and how it was impacting everything. And um, even financially, uh, it made him make some different choices with his uh, career that affected us financially. I didn't understand what that he had a disease at that time. I didn't even know he had a disease, um, let alone why he was making these different career moves that made no sense to me. So <clears throat> now I know, 12 years later, and I'm so grateful that I know, but where do I go from here? Okay, so before I move into that, let me explain something to you. There's a guilt and a shame cycle that gets accompanied with that loneliness. And let me give you some research that I found about this. Um, a researcher named Rokach wrote, there's a stigma to being lonely. The public and therefore us researchers seem to not look favorably on anyone who admits to suffer its pain. No one in my 30 years of researching this topic has ever had the courage to admit in public that he or she is lonely. Lack of friendship and social ties are socially undesirable and the social perceptions of lonely people are generally unfavorable. So hey, it's not just me saying it. I'm telling you that this is a research topic. People don't admit to being lonely because there's a stigma and it makes people sad and uncomfortable and you feel even more lonely <laughs> to discuss this, but it's got to be talked about so it can be dealt with. 
because as long as you're in bondage to something um, that's hidden and secret, you're going to stand bondage to it. Do you want to be free? Do you want to be able to lead like a queen? Or do you want to just keep on trying to hide in and pretend and put on that smile and, oh, I'm blessed. Do you want to just live like that? Or do you want to be free? Me, I'm going to be free. And I'm trying to take you with me. See, we're going to lead like a queen. I don't know if that's showing to you forwards or backwards, but that says queen. All right, so <clears throat> regarding the loneliness in terms of social aspects, honestly, even though my husband and I were a very well-known couple within our social circle, our friendships and social interactions became more and more and more reduced. Over time, as the evidence of our changes due to this traumatic situation became more and more visible and noticeable. Some of what was cleansing, some of that um, isolation actually was cleansing and helped us to get some toxic people out of our lives, which was great. But part of it is just because people who we, who we love being around, they were uncomfortable. They didn't know what was going on. We didn't even know what was going on. So they were uncomfortable or even scared to be around us because they were confused. They didn't know what to say. They didn't know how to react. And I can't blame them for that. I totally get that. So part of that um, loneliness has been a social isolation. And, you know, this is something that is extremely important to understand also. Because once you understand it, you can start learning how to manage it, learning how to deal with things. Now, in terms of solutions, I'm not going to get into all of that in this video. But I want to give you this first thing. The first step towards finding solutions to dealing with loneliness and keeping it from diminishing your leadership success is to admit that you're lonely. All right? Set aside that guilt. Set aside that shame. Set aside that fear. You make a decision. I want to be free from this. I'm going to admit it. I don't care if I have to scream and cry. Go in, go in my car, you know, in the garage and close the door so nobody else can hear me and just scream. You know, if you need to do that, do that. Just, but just admit it. Just admit it. Just start there. Just start there. The rest will follow, but start there. All right. So I'm going to go into more on this on the blog and also in an email series that I have set, that I'm setting up for everybody. If you want to get more information on this topic of how your loneliness affects your leadership and some things that you can do to address it, then please go to leadlikeaqueen.com, sign up for updates there, and I will definitely be so excited to stay connected with you and to share from my heart to yours and help you deal with this. I know you can be victorious. I know you can be free and lead like a queen. I know you can. God bless you. Bye-bye.